<laughs> All right, Spencer. Well, it can take a bite out of your spring fun and leave you feeling ticked off. With warmer temperatures back in the tri-state, tick eggs are hatching. Ew, meteorologist Joe Fitzwater probably had something to do with picking this picture, but he sat down with a wildlife disease specialist to learn more about this four-legged parasite. Joe? Yeah, Rob and Marilee, if you're like me, the sight of the tick slowly meandering itself up your pants will give you a good case of the creepy crawlies. You know that feeling uh, where something feels like it's crawling up yourself? Yeah, I get that quite a bit uh, with the ticks. And with our days getting longer and the temperatures climbing, these creatures will be out and about doing their thing and latching on to look for a snack. The spring weather is here. Flowers are blooming, tree leaves are beginning to show, and we're basking in the freshness of the spring air. But so are the ticks. Ticks are beginning to hatch, and though this threat is nothing new, there are some concerning trends with the diseases they carry and the types of ticks in the tri-state. Ethan Barton is a wildlife disease specialist for the West Virginia DNR and says that some changes are being seen with ticks in our region. Uh, we certainly know that tick species composition is changing, and a lot of that seems to be due to climate change. We have some species of ticks that are either becoming more common in West Virginia or are actually appearing in West Virginia when they weren't really known to occur here before. Some of the numbers are alarming. Lyme disease cases in West Virginia are up 757%. Lyme disease is carried by the black-legged tick, also known as the deer tick. Other tick types in this area, according to Barton, are the American dog tick, as well as the Lone Star tick and the Gulf Coast tick. The Asian longhorn tick is also beginning to show up here and is not native to this area. He says that though the ticks are out there, it shouldn't deter folks from heading outside. Generally, there are lots of repellents out there, things like DEET and picaridin, uh, which are, are known to work. Um, lemon eucalyptus oil is another option for people who don't like to go the uh, kind of manufactured chemical route. Um, and in addition, uh, permethrin sprays have become fairly common. I use permethrin sprays on my hunting clothing, so that one is not for topical application to skin. It's You spray it on clothing, you allow it to dry and it'll last through several wash cycles and, and generally works pretty well to repel ticks. There is also a proper way to remove a tick if it is latched onto your skin. That may be a good idea if you do happen to be bitten by a tick. Um, you know, the best way to remove it is you know, not, not using a light or anything like that. Just taking a pair of a forceps or tweezers, getting as close to the skin surface as you can and just steady pressure away to try to remove as much of that head as you can. And there are a myriad of symptoms that can be experienced if you are bitten by a diseased tick. And I've got some resources on our website at www.tv.com for information regarding that. Also want to give a big thanks to Ethan for all the tips today. Enjoy the warm weather that we're seeing in the digital studio. I'm meteorologist Joe Fitzwater. Back to you in the studio. Joe, thank you for those visuals too. <laughs> we now have an update.